When I was working with my professional athletes, it required me to do a lot of traveling. And this story gets me every time. So when people say, it didn't hurt, it still hurts. I was packing for a trip. My daughter walks into the room. She says, Dad, why do you travel so much? I said, sweetheart, this is how I provide for the family. This is how I take care of you and mom. This is how I put food on the table. She looks at me, says, Daddy, if I eat less, will you stay home more? Now people would think in a fairy tale, or most people would say, I unpacked my suitcase. I'm not going to take this trip. I mean, let's go grab some ice cream or let's go out. I kept packing. Why? I had to set an example for her early of what it meant to win and what you have to leave behind sometimes in order to pursue what's unique to you. And I wanted her to understand this is who I am. And I want to set an example for you. I had a conversation with her later on to tell her why I did all those things. And in the middle of the conversation, she stopped me. She goes, I get it. I understand. She saw the results. She saw how it brought us closer together. She understood my dedication to my craft and what it took to excel and what it took to be different and what it took to stand by unpopular decisions knowing that every successful person that I've met, every successful person that I know had to make those decisions over and over again. There are things that are going to have to take a back seat. You're going to have to leave a lot of things behind. Life is one big mind game. And you're playing it with yourself. You cannot lose perspective of where you've come in life. I'm trying to give people a different thought process of life where failure, hell, disappointment, discomfort is a great learning tool. And many people don't understand that, but it's these few moments in life that you have. Like for me, I always talk about it. Rocky won round 14. That one two minute and 13 second clip of Rocky getting up when Apollo knocked him down. That one clip, when I was going through a very bad time in my life, I saw what I wanted to be. And it wasn't a guy that won. It wasn't a guy that won everything he did. It was a guy that kept getting up after being knocked down. So I realized if that two minutes and 13 seconds changed my life, that's all I was. I saw something that I needed to be in the world I was living in. Maybe my story will give someone the two minutes and 13 seconds they need to change their life. Everybody's got a story. We don't share it on social media. We share our nice life on social media. We, have, we all have a dungeon. I'm just willing to talk about mine. Mental toughness isn't something that you sample. It's something that you live in every day. Whenever hardness comes, and you don't know what it is, it may be different for you than it is for me, but you go back to your insecurities. And then when you go back to your insecurities, you then look for comfort within those insecurities. And we all look for that cookie that your mom used to give you when you were sad, when you were sick. We look for our wife or our husband. We look for comfort. It's in those moments you must retrain your mind 
to think differently in hell. The mental standard is you must know how far you've come. Let's be real. Your work ethic will determine how far you go in this life. Stop doubting yourselves. Y'all keep coming up with these bullshit excuses as to why you can't achieve your goals and get started, where in reality, if you just shut up and got to work, you'd already be where you wanted to be. Fitness is the start of everything. Like if you're not taking care of your body, you're not gonna get anywhere. And this is why I'm, I'm so gung-ho and like so ruthlessly intense with my message when it comes down to that. Like if you can't even go look in the fucking mirror and be happy about what you see, good luck starting anything. You see, my goal is to leave a legacy, to be remembered forever. And that is why I pride myself on the work ethic that I put into every single day. Not sometimes, every single day that I am breathing, I am grinding to leave that legacy. Your first question is, what is this gonna cost me? What is it gonna cost you if you don't? Life is going to be hard. The things that you want to achieve might be a pain in the ass, but it is possible. And anybody who said that it wasn't in your past, I want you to stick that middle finger up right now because it's not gonna get you anywhere. It's your dream. So get out of your head and start walking. Take action so you can achieve something. Look at all the success stories in the goddamn world. Take mine as inspiration for you. I went from an iron worker addicted to sense to a seven figure earner. I grew up in a fucking trailer that was less than 800 square feet in the country to now living in a 5,000 square foot, $2 million home. What the fuck is there not to understand here? While the rest of the world is sleeping, you are wide awake. And you are on the attack for your success. It doesn't start with them and they. It starts with me. So I'm just wondering when you're gonna make it personal. Are you really prepared to grind it out? Everybody wants public authority, but nobody wants private discipline. When your habits change behind the scenes, when your private life begins to shift, when you put aside the things that are not serving you, if it's going to be personal, make it personal. Don't just be great in public, be great in private. Success doesn't always have to be loud. Sometimes it's necessary to be quiet and just move. Are you really prepared to do what you need to do to get what you want out of your life? You gotta live, you have to breathe, you have to eat this purpose. Every single day, you are either losing ground or gaining ground. You are not going to win anything until you understand what struggle means. You can never quit. But you gotta work hard in silence. You gotta work when nobody's watching. You gotta sacrifice behind the scenes. When you take it personal, your private life changes. Success is a process. The process comes before success. The struggle comes before the process. Everybody wants to contribute to destiny, but nobody wants to be committed to destiny. What kind of work are you putting in behind the scenes? What can you conquer in the dark? How personal is your purpose? This is what we call grinding in silence. You've lost touch with who you are. 
the core of your being. You're on social media too much. You're listening to what other people are telling you. You gotta listen to yourself. You gotta cut all that shit out. You have to look at the things that you love and the things that you hate. So what you don't like is very instructive to you, right? You're looking at things that are very powerful inside of you, that are emotional, they're not intellectual, they're feelings, they're emotions, they're visceral things that you connect to. I've always followed the laws of power, which is change things up, enter action with boldness, don't be afraid to do things differently, adapt your strategy to the circumstance. It's never too late. The earlier you figure it out, the better off you are, but it can happen later in life. Now, I figured out at an early age that I wanted to write. I didn't know what I wanted to write, but I love words and I love writing. And if I didn't have that connection when I was eight years old, all the way into high school and college, I would have been a lost soul. And I empathize with a lot of people who don't have that feeling when they're eight or 18 or in their 20s. But I try to tell people everybody has it. You're just not listening to yourself. You've lost touch with who you are. There are five forms of intelligence. We normally associate intelligence with intellectuals, with our Noam Chomsky, with Albert Einstein. No, intelligence comes in all forms. Working with your hands is a form of intelligence. A carpenter has a high form of intelligence. People who are sports who athletically use their body, that's another form of intelligence. There's music, there's math, there's language. You have one of these frames of mind. By the way your brain is wired, you, have, you are inclined towards one of them. Figure that out. You've got to be a bit bold. You have to embrace what makes you different. It takes time. To do anything in life takes time and hours and patience and work. So I like to tell people to go back to their earliest childhood memories of things that really excited them before they got mixed up with parents, teachers, and all that, other people telling them stuff, you know? You gotta cut all that shit out. The hardest thing with Kobe was getting him to stop. Yeah, okay, take a break, rest. Yes. Take the day off. That was the most challenging thing with him because over all the years, that he had his success, it was about go, go, go. And then when I came on, I was the complete icicle. I gotta get you to stop. His 3 a.m. workouts, yeah. they're crazy. Crazy, you know, having to keep the Staples Center open later because he wasn't happy the way he performed at that game. And I would not leave till he would leave. Really? Yeah, so we would be, we would be in the arena sometimes two, three o'clock in the morning. Shut up. All the lights are turned off except on the court, and we just keep going, we just keep going. What is the mindset of winning? They both have that. So I look at it, I look at it three ways. So you have individuals that compete. Mm -hmm. You know a lot of people that compete. Yeah. You know, every we all know how to compete. Everybody knows how to how to compete. You don't forget how to compete. We just decide not to anymore. Mm -hmm. But so, a lot of people compete just to finish. But then there's individuals that win, but they only win one time. It's easy to win and then never win again. And then there's people that win at winning. You can't come back the same. Cannot come back the same. You have to come back different. You have to come back better. Winning wants you to be different. Winning requires you to do different things. Winning requires you to think in a different way. Winning speaks its own language. Winning has its own way of recognizing you. Winning wants you to write your own story. Stop looking for steps. Those steps are infinite. Find your own path to winning. Because as the late, great Kobe Bryant said, winning is everything. So what are you going to build in 2023? What are you going to create? What type of lifestyle are you going to live? Who are you going to partner with? What obstacles are you going to break through? It's all 
up to you. It's time to wake up. Stop making excuses. Stop justifying your laziness. Stop choosing mediocrity. Wake up. Be better than who you used to be. Be better than who you are right now. Everybody else puts off everything until tomorrow, but not you. You are going to choose to be better today. You are going to push through the struggles and hardships that come up this year. You are going to grind until you are exhausted, until you feel like you have nothing more, and then grind harder to achieve more this year because you deserve it. It's time to set the standard for your family and be the example this year. This year, everything changes. It's time to level up. Don't tell me you want to go to the next level. Don't tell me you want to be great. Don't tell me you want to succeed when everything that you're doing is leading you to failure. So no more resolutions. We about that action. We about following through. As a matter of fact, your motto for this year and the rest of your life is follow through. You shouldn't feel scared. Accomplishing a dream isn't, nor should it ever be easy. But let me alleviate some of that fear. It's not going to be perfect. You may slip or stumble or even fail, but you're going to get back up and keep going. It's your time. It's your turn. Embrace it. New year. New year. New you. New you. What are you going to do? Every struggle that you have been through, every hardship that you had to encounter, you did what must be done and yet you are still here. You fought the good fight, but you did not give up. The hardships, all of these things that we all had to endure, we can endure it a little bit longer. Remember, you are built for any weather or any storm you'll face. So let's go. Let's do this. It's time to move. Forget what's happened in the past. Every new year, every new month, every new week, every new day is a chance to write a brand new chapter in your life. You know, I was, I was frustrated. I was depressed. I even have to admit I had moments that were slightly suicidal because I knew deep down that I could do something. I was, I was different from other people. I had different experiences, you know, and I knew that I, there was something I needed to express. There was a purpose to the, how my life had unfolded, but I couldn't find it. I had tried everything. I had every, tried every form of writing, every possible endeavor you can imagine. It just didn't click. So I was very deeply frustrated. And the frustration I tell people, it's a good thing. Negative emotions are trying to teach you something. They're trying to teach you the opposite. Something else is going on. Frustration, what would be worse than frustration would be despair, giving up. No hope, but frustration is a sign that you haven't given up. You're, you know you can do something, but you haven't figured it out. So when you have those kind of feelings, look at them and there's something positive in that. So I knew that there was something I was meant to do. I just couldn't figure it out when. It's easy for me, a boomer, I have to admit that, to preach to you when you have to gone through like two, you've gone through a pandemic, a, a, what looks like to be a recession. And then if you're a millennial, you went through another, you went through the crash in 08. It's easy for me to preach. You're dealing with really difficult circumstances. So a lot of people are rethinking their lives. They don't want to work and crap jobs just to get by. And I applaud that 100%, right? That's great. So you want to think about working for yourself is the ultimate position in this world. And even though times are difficult, even though it may seem like a, just a dream, there's so much potential out there for entrepreneurial spirit, for creating your own startup, for creating your own podcast, for going your own path in life. You don't have to follow other people.
It's not like it was when I was growing up. There were things that were better back then. There are things that were a lot worse, right? You have so many more options. It's just that you're not going to reach them. You're not going to be happy in this short time that you have to be alive, unless you take it seriously and still have some fun and adventure and excitement. You got to listen to yourself. You have to embrace what makes you different. Just don't listen to your parents. Go. I got to be making a hundred thousand dollars when I'm 23 and go to law school and do all this stuff. You're going to burn out. So kind of understand your. I guess the main thing I would say is know who you are, know what what your what your you know deep down your core, what you love, what you hate, and what you were destined to create in this world. That's like the most important process you can go through. Everybody has that potential. But I know it doesn't come easy. It's a process, and you have to be patient. You have to put in the work. But another skill that you cannot ignore is the social. We're social animals, and there are a lot of people in life who ignore that because they're shy. And I was very shy as a young man. I was mostly very quite introverted as well. Because they're shy. They just simply lean on their own strength, which is learning something really well, learning math or learning algorithms or learning how to write, etc. And they ignore the social because they're afraid of it. But you cannot get ahead in this world as a social animal, dependent on other people in every aspect of life, unless you treat that as another skill as well. So yes, the process of looking inward is absolutely essential. But you cannot disconnect yourself from your teachers. Your mentors, your colleagues—you could have all the skill in the world and know your life's task brilliantly, but if you continually alienate people by your boorish behavior, by your insensitivity, all of the skill level in the world will be completely neutralized by your own mistakes. I didn't listen to other people. At so many turning points in my life. I could have been discouraged. People could have said, "Get the," you know. I had somebody say, "Robert, you're never going to be a good writer in life. You know, you need to go to business school, etc." My parents tried to funnel me this way or that way. I was stubborn, and I was rebellious, and I did my own thing. And、um, because of that, I have kind of a, 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 a different voice from other people, right? And when I look at books out there. I'm searching for that voice, for that voice of somebody who's different, who has something different to say, who has, speaks in a different tone of voice, that has their blood and their personality in their writing. And I don't find it often, but when I do, it's a great thing. And so, to me, success in life is kind of being who you are. There's a famous expression of of the great ancient Greek poet Pindar about. Become who you are. It's a process of becoming who you actually are, and realizing what it is. So we talked about my weirdness earlier on, and following that has allowed me to craft my own message, which is basically about opening your eyes up to the reality of the world and to what people are like. But I wasn't. I'm not able to do that unless I had ignored what other people tried to foist on me earlier on in life. It's never too late. You were overlooked the last time, but show up again. Why? Because you are not finished. It is not over. You are not done. It is not too late. What matters is that you believe in you. What matters is that you believe in your vision. You simply have to give it everything you have to get it. You need to shut down all negativity, and frankly, not give a sh what others say and think. You want to know what the ten most dangerous words in the English language are? What will other people say, and what will other people think? Celebrate the small wins. If we keep looking at the big picture, if we keep looking at the end game, if that's all we fix our eyes on. Then we'll get off kilter. We'll lose our footing, and we'll walk around discouraged because you're not going to just wake up in one day and fulfill destiny. It's the process that's perfecting us.
So are you willing to make the tough decisions? Are you willing to get up every time you fall? Success looks glamorous from the outside looking in, but there is always a price to pay. Do what makes you happy and do what you think is right. At the end of the day, if you and you alone can look yourself in the mirror and be content with the choices you've made, then that's all that matters. I don't care what your background is. I don't care what your story is. Only you know your story. Only you know your journey. But you got to make sure you understand how this thing is made. You're running this race by yourself. So don't worry what place you come in. I want you to start. I want you to finish. And I want you to never give up. If you're not hungry, if you don't have the grit, if you don't have the tenacity, then you're not going to get what you're looking for. But you got to have that mindset that quitting is not an option. Give up? Who me? Never. Stop? Who me? Never. That's for the next guy. That's for the next girl. But not me. Why? Because I don't quit. That ain't how I do it. That ain't how I roll. I never give up. If you truly want that greatness, you got to work hard. You got to dig a little bit deeper. You got to find it. You got to go after it because it's not looking for you. Success is not looking for you. You got to go get it. What is it that you can do today to get closer to the manifestation of the future? What are you doing today? What are you giving today? The sacrifices, the tears, the late nights, the early mornings, all of it will be worth it. 74% hate their job in America. The majority of people don't like what they're doing because they're really not doing it because they didn't have a goal and they followed this goal. They just aimlessly drift around and then all of a sudden there's a job opening so they get that job because you have to work. But then when you work, it's a chore. It's work. It's not fun. So if you think about only a quarter of the people really enjoy what they're doing in life. That is unbelievable if you think about it. So I felt so blessed that I knew what I was doing. It's like a medical student that studies and knows he wants to become a doctor. You know where to go. You see, if you don't have a vision of where you go and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. It's like you can have the best ship in the world, you can have the best airplane in the world. If the pilot or the captain doesn't know where to go, it will just drift around. It will not end up anywhere or most likely in the wrong place. And I didn't really like Austria when I grew up. I couldn't wait to get out of there. I couldn't see myself becoming a farmer or a worker in a factory, or anything like that. Even though my parents wanted me to stay there and have a normal life. But that was their vision, not mine. My vision was totally different. I felt that I was born for something special, for something unique, for something big. Do you know how great it felt that I knew where I was going? Imagine the majority of people don't know where they're going. I knew where I was going. So it was just a question of how do you do it? I am shooting for a goal. In front of me is the Mr. Universe title. So every rep that I do gets me closer to accomplishing that goal, to make this goal, this vision turn into reality. Every single set that I do Every repetition, every weight that I lift will get me a step closer to turn this goal into reality. So I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound squat. I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound bench press. I couldn't wait for the next exercise. Maybe it has never been done before. That's perfectly fine with me. But I'm gonna do it. And I did not listen to the naysayers. With the age of 20, I went to London and I won the Mr. Universe contest as the youngest Mr. Universe ever. And it was because I had a goal. If I would have listened to the naysayers, 
from bodybuilding to show business to uh, politics, I would not be standing here today talking to you. So this is why I say don't listen to the naysayers. I've never ever had a plan B. I would have to work over and over and over until I get it. It is very dangerous to have a plan B because you're cutting yourself off from the chance of really succeeding. And the reason, one of the main reasons why people want to have a plan B is because they are worried about failing. We all fail. Winners will fail and get up, fail and get up, fail and get up. You always get up. That is a winner. That is a winner. We all have losses. This is okay. And this is why I say don't be worried about losing because when you're afraid of losing, then you get frozen. In order to perform well in anything, if it's in boxing or if it is on your job or with your thinking, it's only happening when you relax. It's okay to fail. Let's just go all out and give it everything that you got. That's what it is all about. So don't be afraid to fail. It's all about the hard work that you put in. So they all say that's impossible. That's impossible. That can't be done. But I didn't listen to those losers. I didn't listen to them at all. And it was because I had a goal. Because I believed 